so good evening everyone and i hope you all are fine there so now in this session we will discuss about some hidden tricks about root locus okay oh i hope you have studied root locus now i have taken some previous year questions and uh, i will try to solve those previous year, previous year questions using the options which is provided to us but there are some questions uh, in which the options are not provided so i will try to solve those questions also and uh, let's see how it goes and i hope uh, you will get some good insight about the root locus okay let's try to understand it so uh, uh, this is my introduction uh, my name is asu jangda and i teach almost every subject in electrical engineering you can join me on this platform uh, those student who want to join uh, who have some financial uh, issues so you can uh, give this scholarship test national scholarship test for gate exam and this will be on 11th of june at 12 pm so you can register yourself for this exam and uh, you can avail scholarship up to 90% Uh, so you can register uh, for this uh, the link is given in the description and uh, there is one free workshop for gate 2024 students uh, who want to prepare for gate 2024 they can join this workshop uh, seven key factor that transform average student to gate toppers so this workshop is taken by abhinav negi sir you can join this workshop uh, this will be on 13th of june at 7:30 pm again uh, you can get the insight you can get the uh, important uh, points from uh, negi sir so you can join this workshop and get benefited now it's time for guru dakshina so you have to give the guru dakshina guys you have to subscribe our channel press the like button uh, like it uh, and uh, press the bell icon also so that you get the notification whenever my sessions are live okay so let's come to the questions guys look at the first question so i have taken some previous year questions and i will try to solve those questions with the help of uh, options okay Uh, because i will give you some basic tricks that you can apply and with the help of option you can solve the problem okay sir is there electrical material as a light topic sorry sir um, electrical material is same okay for a light topics i mean it's basic simple network control and log um, and basic things are there okay let's come to the uh, final uh, uh, i mean on the question guys look at this the characteristic equation of the feedback control system is given like this so this is the characteristic equation okay where k greater than 0 is a scalar variable parameter uh, in the root locus diagram of the system the asymptotes of the root loci for large value of k meet at the point in s plane whose coordinate are it means the centroid he is asking about the centroid because if you read it carefully you can see that in the root locus diagram of the system the asymptotes of the root loci of large value of k for large value of k meet at a point in the s plane whose coordinate are so it means we need to calculate the centroid point now how to calculate the centroid point first of all if you look at the characteristic equation it is s cube plus 5 s square plus k s plus 6 s plus k equal to 0 this is my characteristic equation you can see that the thing is we have two different value of k i mean a two uh, we, uh, the k is appearing at two places two different places now let's combine it okay if if you combine it you will get s cube plus 5 s square plus k into s plus 1 plus 6s this is the characteristic equation now what you can do is you can take this term and this term common okay if you are taking common you will get this s cube plus 5s square plus 6s i have taken this as common 1 plus k into s plus 1 divided by s cube plus 5s square plus 6s and that is equal to 0 now this common term is gone so we are left with this function so this is 1 plus gshs this is my characteristic equation now so we got the gshs value okay so gshs is this now we want to calculate the centroid point how to calculate the centroid point let me simplify this gshs so gshs is k into s plus 1 divide by s cube plus 5 s square plus 6s plus 0 okay this is my gshs you can write it like this now we know that the centroid point is sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by number of pole minus number of zeros you can see that the number of pole has to be 3 because the highest order is 3 okay and number of zeros is 1 so number of pole minus number of zeros okay now what is the sum of pole sum of pole is this the negative of this coefficient 
the highest power is 3 so the next highest is 2 so the coefficient of s square is uh, represented as sum of the poles and the negative coefficient i have to take okay so sum of the pole is minus 5 and what is the sum of zeros sum of zeros is uh, this one okay sum of zeros you can see that the highest power in the numerator is 1 so the next highest is 0 s to the power 1 is the highest power and the next highest is s to the power 0 so the coefficient of s to the power 0 is the sum of zeros so 1 is the sum of zeros but you have to take negative okay so minus 1 is the sum of zeros so sum of the poles minus sum of zeros sum of zeros is minus 1 okay i hope it is clear the, the, it means the second highest term we have to see if you want to take the sum of the poles or sum of zeros then what you need to do is you need to do, look at the second highest term take the negative okay um, that term should be negative so sum of pole is minus 5 sum of zeros is minus 1 okay from here you can get the idea of uh, poles and zeros and you can calculate the centroid point so it came out to be tell me guys minus 5 plus 1 so it will become minus 4 divide by 2 so it came out to be minus 2 okay so answer is bombay it's easy peasy answer is bombay okay so the question was very simple the only thing is you have to simplify like this okay and what is the trick inside in this generally what the student do they 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 try to calculate the pole location and the zeros location so they will say that okay uh, the zero lies at minus one and the pole lies at zero comma and then they will calculate the roots of this system okay minus three comma minus two okay they will calculate the poles and zeros and they then they will try to take the sum sum of the poles minus sum of the zero no need to calculate pole and zeros you can directly check the pole and zeros sum of pole and sum of zeros directly from this this uh, function okay so it's easy peasy i hope you understood this point how to calculate sum of pole and sum of zeros directly from this GSHS function and this way you can calculate the centroid point let's come to the next question guys consider the point okay we have this point and we have this point in the s plane for a system with the open loop transfer function open loop transfer function is given to us now which point lies on the root locus we need to tell that we need to check which point lies on the root locus now to check which point lies on the root locus Ivan condition must be satisfied. What are those Ivan condition? The magnitude of GSHS at some s equal to s1. If the s1 lies on the root locus, it has to be 1. And the phase of GSHS at s equal to s1, it has to be 180 plus minus 180. Okay. These are the Ivan condition. These conditions must be satisfied. Now, if you look at this point, I mean, you cannot apply magnitude condition. Why? Because this k is unknown. At any point, this magnitude condition will be satisfied. Why? Because you can take any value of k such that the magnitude become 1. It means you cannot analyze whether the point will lie on the root locus or not using the magnitude criteria. Okay? Because uh, the, the k can always make the system, uh, the magnitude equal to 1. Whatever the magnitude of the denominator, the same magnitude you can take for the k and the magnitude will always become equal to 1 for some value of k. It means this criteria cannot be used. It means the phase criteria has to be used to find which point lies on the root locus. Now, if you look at this, there are four, I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, the power 4 is there. It means whatever the angle of this function, 4 times the angle of this entire function. Now, let's calculate the phase angle. Now, if you look at this point, Let's say you are looking at this point S1 and you put S equal to S1 and check the phase of this quantity and check whether the, it is satisfying the phase criteria or not. So what you can do is if you put this point you will get that K divided by minus 3 plus J4 so it will become minus 2 plus J4 to the power 4 and we need to check the phase of this quantity. Now the second part is you put minus 3 minus J2 so it will become minus 2 minus J2 raised to the power 4. Now, can you tell me, to make this angle 180, to make this phase of this quantity to 180, the phase of this quantity has to be 45 or 180 plus 45 or 180 minus 45. If the phase of this quantity, this denominator is 45 degree or 180 plus 45 degree or 180 minus 45 degree, then you can say, then the phase of this overall quantity will be 180 because 45 into 4, 45 into 4 is 180, 180 into 4 is 0, 180 into 4 is 
uh, integer multiple of 360, it is gone 0. So, 45 multiplied by 4 is 180. 45 multiplied by 4 because there are 4 terms. Na? So, 45 multiplied by 4 is 180. Okay. So, that is why we want this phase. Now, if you are looking this function, the phase of this function cannot be 45 or 180 plus 45. Because uh, the, the real part and the imaginary part not, re, not equal, then only uh, if the real and the imaginary part equal, then only you will get the 45 term in the phase. Okay. Now, only option is this. In this case, you will get 45 angle and you can see that this is in the third quadrant, so angle is this. Okay. So, the angle of this quantity is this. Now, multiply by 4 times. If you multiply it 4 times, this will go 0, this will become 180. So, the angle of this denominator is 180. Take this angle in the numerator, you will get minus 180. It means this S2 is satisfying the phase criteria. Okay. This S2 is satisfying the phase criteria. Okay. So, it means S2 is on the root locus, but not S1. Answer is Bombay. So, simple using phase, you can check. Okay. Akbar is saying, thank you, sir, for your trick for previous question using theory of question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's a, it's a simple trick. Nah? It's a simple trick. Don't calculate pole and zero location. You can directly calculate sum of pole and sum of zeros from the coefficient itself. Okay. It's a simple case. Okay. I hope you got the point. Let's come to the next question, guys. So, for this question, S2 will lie on the root locus. You can check the phase criteria and calculate the answer. Let's come to the next question. So, uh, the root locus of the system, GSHS is provided to us. We need to find the breakaway. Okay. Let's look at the breakaway. We know that the poles of the closed loop system will lie at this point. One is here, one is at minus 2, one is at minus 3. 0, minus 2, minus 3. Now, if you want to plot the root locus, the rough root locus will look like this. This will be the part of root locus. This will be the part of root locus and it will go like this. This is the root locus. It means the breakaway point should be between 0 and minus 2. The first thing is this. According to this rough plot, we can say that the breakaway point should lie between 0 and minus 2. So, if you look at this, this cannot be correct. This cannot be correct. Either this is correct or this is correct. It means two options can be eliminated. Now, we have to check what is the value of the breakaway point. Where the breakaway point will lie? How to check it? Generally, what we do is we take dk by ds and put dk by ds equal to 0. Okay? And from there, we calculate this breakaway point. Now, now let us make dk by ds equal to 0. So, we calculate k is equal to, if I put gshs equal to minus 1, you can calculate the k value. k is equal to s into s plus 2 into s plus 3. So, that will become s into Okay, uh, let me multiply this and and then I, I want to take the derivative. So, it will become s cube plus, uh, it will become uh, 5s square plus 6s. Okay, this is my k and obviously with minus sign. Now, we have calculated k value. How to calculate k? 1 plus gs is equal to 0. gs is this. Plus 1 equal to 0 and calculate the k value from there. So, k is this. Now, let us calculate dk by ds. So, dk by ds came out to be minus of 3s square plus 10s plus 6 equal to 0. Okay? Put dk by ds equal to 0 and calculate the value of s. We know that. This is the method. So, now if you look at this, let us take 3 also common and take this minus on, the, on this side. So, it will become s square plus 10 by 3s plus 2 equal to 0. This is my equation and we want to calculate the root of this equation. Now, we have two roots. The roots which is in between these two locations will be the breakaway point. We know that. But to calculate this, it is difficult. I mean, it is not difficult, but why to waste time? We know that the product of the root has to be 2 and the sum of the root has to be minus 10 by 3. It means the sum of the root, the, 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 the two values that you are getting, the two breakaway points that you are getting, their sum has to be minus 3.33 and their product has to be 2. How to calculate that point? Either you can uh, use it, uh, I mean, you can solve the quadratic equation or you can go with the options. Or you can go with the options. Let us say one root is here, minus 0. 0.5. If one root is minus 0. 0.5, if one root is minus 0. 0.5, then the other root has to be, you can, you can uh, re uh, remove that minus 0. 0.5 from here, okay? If you are removing, because the sum of the root has to be minus 3.33, now, okay, 10 by 3. Sum of the root has to be minus 10 by 3. If one root is at minus half, then what about the other root? What about the other root? The other root has to be 
you can take the LCM 6 okay and it will become minus 20 plus 3 is it clear guys so it will become 17 by 6 minus 17 by 6 it means if one root is at minus half the other root has to be minus 17 by 6 minus 17 by 6 you can see that and you can see that there's sum if i want to take the sum sum has to be minus 10 by 3 please check the sum sum has to be minus so if i calculate the sum the 6 will be lcm and uh, here it will be minus 3 here it will be minus 17 so it will be minus 20 by 6 minus 10 by 3 so you are getting sum as minus 10 by 3 it means if the first root is this then the second root has to be this if first root is this second root has to be this because their sum has to be minus 10 by 3 okay but and the product has to be 2 but their product is not 2 you can see that the product is not 2 Product is 17 by 12. It is not 2. It means this cannot be correct. Answer is Delhi. Okay. Answer is Delhi. With the help of option, you can solve like this. There is no need to check. I mean, no need to find the roots of this equation. It's a lengthy process and you don't have calculator. So what you can do is using options, you can check. Because two, two options you have already eliminated. Now, the remaining two. From remaining two, you can do it like this. I mean, use your brain at least. Use some mathematics and from mathematics you can check which option is correct. Okay. Let's come to the next question guys. The root locus of a system is given below. There is one system whose root locus is provided to us. Okay. And uh, the open loop transfer function corresponding to the. Okay. So we have, they have provided us some root locus. One pole is here. One pole is here. One pole is here. And one zero is this. So you can see that this will be the part of root locus. And this will be the part of root locus. So this pole will merge here. And this pole will go to the infinity. We know that. Now we want to calculate uh, what is the GST. So it's this very simple question. You can take this zero in the numerator. Okay. And uh, pole in the denominator. S into S plus 2 into S plus 3. It's, it's very simple. Okay. It's very simple. And obviously K. Is it clear guys? So this has to be the correct answer. Answer is Delhi. Answer is Delhi. It's a very question, very easy question. Okay. So I hope uh, you can solve it like this. Uh, it's, it's a very easy question, guys. Let's come to the next question. The next question on your screen is a unity feedback system has open loop transfer. So GSHS is provided to us. Okay. The value of the gain K, K4 greater than zero, the root locus crosses the imaginary axis. So where the root locus will cross imaginary? It means the system has to be marginally stable. For what value of k the system has to be marginally stable so one method is route you can use route criteria but there is one more method okay there is one more method and that method is very simple let me tell you what is the value of k for that how to calculate k let's first go with the conventional method what you need to do is to calculate the k value you apply route method and what is the route me route method you first write the characteristic equation like this okay s plus one s plus 3 okay and then uh, you have write this equation like s q plus uh, uh, this will be 4 s square plus 3 s plus k okay this is my characteristic equation now you apply route to calculate the value of k for which the system is marginally stable okay you do it like this there is one more method and that method is look we know that the root locus is like this one pole is here one pole is at minus one one pole is at minus three Okay, so the root locus will look like this. The root locus will look like this. Fine. The root locus will look like this. Now, at this point, the system is marginally stable. At this point, we need to find the k value. How to calculate this k value? If somehow we can find this point, then calculation of k is very easy. Though the route method is also very easy. Okay, you can apply the route method. It's again a trick. Route is, itself is a trick. Okay. But there is one more method. What you can do is you can calculate this point. If somehow you can calculate this point, at this point you can calculate the k value. Okay. At this point you can calculate the k value. Now, how to calculate this point? This point satisfies the Ivan condition. This lies on the imaginary axis and it satisfies the Ivan condition. It means at this axis, S is j omega. And at this point, the angle of g j omega h j omega is equal to 180 degree because s is j omega only on this axis s is j omega and at this point the phase of this quantity has to be 180 degree because it, this point lies on the root locus 
Now, do you remember this condition? This condition is for the phase crossover frequency, if you remember. It means this is my omega PC, phase crossover frequency. How to calculate omega PC? Omega PC is the frequency at which this phase becomes 180 degree. Now, we need to calculate the angle of this quantity. You replace S with J omega and calculate its angle and calculate the frequency at which the phase becomes 180 degree. That frequency is known as phase crossover frequency. We will get to know this point. Once you get this point, calculation of K is very easy. Okay. Now, how to calculate this omega PC? It's very easy. Look at the phase of this number, a phase of this function if you put s equal to j omega. So, if you put s equal to j omega, the phase of this quantity is 90 minus 10 inverse of omega minus 10 inverse of omega by 3 and this has to be 180. If you take this 90 on this side, it will become 90. It means this sum has to be 90. Okay. If you combine them, let's take minus common. Let's take minus common. Oh, wait, wait a minute. It should be minus. Okay. It should be minus. So, uh, uh, because minus 90 minus 10 inverse 1 minus 10 inverse omega by 3. It has to be equal to minus 180. Okay. Because plus minus 180 you can take na? plus minus 180. So, let's take minus 180 here. So, now this minus 180 is gone here. Minus 90 is gone here. So, left is minus 90 on this side. It means this sum has to be minus 90. So, if I take this minus common, I can say that 10 inverse of omega plus omega by 3 divided by 1 minus omega square by 3 is equal to 90. And this can be 90 only if omega is root 3, if this denominator becomes 0. So, we calculated this frequency. We calculated this point. We calculated this point, j root 3. Now, at this point, the magnitude of this function has to be 1. Okay. Now, you can put s equal to j root 3 and, put, and calculate the magnitude and put it equal to 1. This way also you can calculate the k value. Though it is a lengthy process by this way, I mean using this way it is a lengthy, you can apply the Routh. Routh will give you direct answer. Routh is again easy. Okay, Routh is, itself is a trick. So, you can apply Routh criteria or there is one more way. I told you this is, the, this is one more way. This is my omega pc. You can calculate this frequency. This is omega pc. Once you got this omega pc, you got this value. You got this, this point value, okay? You got this point value. So, at this point, you need to calculate the k value. How to calculate? You just put s equal to this j root 3 and calculate, put, take the magnitude, put the magnitude equal to 1 and calculate the k value, okay? So, I am giving you some other dimension also, okay? This way also you can solve the problem. But you can use Routh also, okay? Routh is more easier because using Routh, you can directly check what is the value of k. You can make auxiliary equation and calculate the k value so that the system become marginally stable. Let us come to the next question guys. I do not want to solve this, okay. You can solve it easily, okay. You can do it because the options are not given. Otherwise, options, if options were given, then I can directly check, okay. But it is okay. If options are not given, you can calculate the k using Routh. Let us come to the next question. The open loop transfer function of a unity feedback configuration is given as this, okay. GSHS is given as this, okay. Now, the value of k for which minus 1, 0, 2 lies on the root locus. How to calculate the k value if this point lies on the root locus? Simple. Even conditions. At this point, the magnitude of this function has to be 1. It is very simple. Okay. At this point, the magnitude of this function has to be 1 because it lies on the root locus. If some point lies on the root locus, at that point, the magnitude of GSHS has to be 1 and the phase of GSHS has to be plus minus 180. These are the even conditions. So, if this point lies on the root locus, then at this point, the phase has to be 180 uh, and the magnitude has to be 1. So, let us calculate magnitude. To calculate the magnitude, what you need to do is, in place of S, you put this value. Okay. If you put uh, uh, this value, then the numerator will become 3 plus J2 and in the denominator, you will you will get uh, 7 plus J2 and here, it is square of this quantity. Square of this quantity is 1 minus 4 minus 4j minus 9. Okay. So, I have taken the square of this quantity a square plus b square minus 2ab okay, and then minus 9 and put the magnitude equal to 1. So, we need to calculate the magnitude of this quantity and calculate the value of k. It is easy peasy. Okay. It is easy peasy. You can do it yourself now. You can calculate the k value. So, no need to solve this question. It is it's very simple. Okay, This point lies on the root locus. It means it has to satisfy the Ivan condition. Magnitude has to be 1. Okay, Let us come to the next question. 
for a system shown in the figure s is equal to minus 2.5 lies on the root locus if k is so again the same question is repeated what is the gshs first let's calculate gshs this is my gs and this is hs so if you multiply it you will get 10k into s plus 3 divided by s plus 2 okay this is our gshs fine now what i need to do is I find the I, I need to find the value of k for which this point lies on the root locus. How to do that? You can put s equal to minus 2.5 and put the magnitude equal to 1. Again, same thing. This is my GSHS. Once you get this GSHS, at this point you need to calculate the k value. So what you can do is in place of s, you can put this point and take the magnitude equal to 1. Because at root locus, every point must satisfy the Ivan condition. Okay? Ivan condition is magnitude has to be 1 and the phase has to be plus minus 180 since we need to calculate k value so you have to take the magnitude at this point put s equal to minus 2.73 take the magnitude and put it equal to 1 and calculate the k value so it's easy peasy you can do it yourself it's very simple okay let's come to the next question the next question on your screen is open loop transfer function of a unity feedback control system is given this this is my gshs okay the value of k at the breakaway point of the feedback current. It means first we need to calculate the breakaway point. Once we get the breakaway point, then we can say, once we get the breakaway point, then we say, uh, we can calculate the k value. Okay, then we can calculate the k value. But the options, if the options were given, it will be very easy to solve for k. Without calculation, you can easily solve. Let me tell you how. We know that this is my GSHS. What is the characteristic equation? Characteristic equation is 1 plus GSHS equal to 0. 5S plus 5 equal to 0. Now, if you solve it, it will become S square plus 5S plus 5 plus K. This is my characteristic equation. Now, for what value of K the breakaway point lie? I mean, the, the breakaway point exists. At the breakaway point, remember, the roots of the, of the equation must be equal the roots has to be equal the roots has to be because we know that at breakaway point at breakaway point what happens is let's say there is some breakaway point at breakaway point both the roots has the same value because the system contain two two roots only so both the roots has the same value okay they has to be at the same point it means for what value of k this equation has same roots so you can apply the discriminant formula b square minus 4ac equal to 0 b square minus 4ac equal to 0 and calculate the k value okay you even don't need to calculate the breakaway point you don't need, need to calculate the breakaway point directly you can apply because we know that at the breakaway point the roots has to be uh, roots has to be uh, equal to, to get the equal roots, the discriminant has to be 0. B square minus 4ac has to be 0. And if you want to calculate this, you will get 5 minus 4k has to be 0. k has to be 5 by 4. It's very easy. Okay. It's very simple. You don't need to calculate breakaway point. Because many students, what they do is, they first calculate the breakaway point. It means this point they have calculated. They, they need to calculate S1. Once we get this S1, then you can put S equal to S1 here and calculate the magnitude. Put the magnitude equal to 1. This is the way they do, okay. But what you can do is, oh, we have only two roots, you can see that, we have only two roots. Okay, now what you can do is, we know that at breakaway point, the two roots must be same. So what you can do is, you can first write the character's equation, it's a second order equation. For what value of k, this second order equation has the same roots, same roots, both the roots has to be same. Okay, so I have applied the discriminant method b square minus 4 is equal to 0 and calculated the k value. It means you can apply simple mathematics if you understood the concept, if you know the concept, what is the meaning of breakaway. If you know a little bit about breakaway point, then you can easily apply the mathematics and you can solve for k value. I hope it is clear. Let's come to the next question guys. In the next question, a forward path transfer function and the feedback path transfer function of a single loop negative feedback Control system, okay, this is my GS, this is HS. So, GSHS is known to us now, okay. If the variable parameter K is real and positive, it means K greater than 0, then the location of the breakaway point on the root locus diagram. We need to calculate the location of the breakaway point. How to calculate the location of the breakaway point? So, again, it's very easy. Either you apply the basic method, okay, 
either you apply the basic method or what you can do is let let, let me do it uh, the, the basic method is calculate the k value we know that this is gshs because hs is one so this this is only gs gshs equal to minus one so calculate the k value k value will be minus of s square plus 2s plus 2 divided by s plus 2 this is my k value from characteristic equation you got the k value now you can take dk by ds put it equal to 0 and calculate the breakaway point there is no problem at all easy peasy okay you can do it like this there is one more way let's plot the root locus first if you look at this 1 0 is at minus 2 and there are two poles there are two poles at complex location okay now we know that this will be the part of root locus so the root locus will look like this so the graph will be like this okay the root locus will be like this so we need to find this point now how to find it one way is this dk by ds you can take dk by ds equal to 0 and calculate this location it's easy peasy okay there is one more way and that way i just told you we know that at breakaway point two roots are equal both the roots are equal. So let's calculate the characteristic equation. We know that the characteristic equation is 1 plus k into s plus 2 divided by s square plus 2s plus 2 equal to 0. Now if you want to calculate the characteristic equation, it will become s square plus 2 plus k s plus 2 into k plus 1. This is my characteristic equation. We know that. For what value of k? the roots of this equation are equal we can calculate this this k location at this point what is the k value for what value of k the the poles of this equation are equal the roots of this equation are equal so what you can do is we can apply the discriminant method b square minus 4ac okay so you can apply b square b square minus 4ac so it will become 8 into k plus 1 equal to 0 and you can calculate the k value you can calculate the k value for which the roots are equal. Once you get this k value, once you get this k value, now you can put the k value here and you can put the k value here and calculate the roots of this equation. Okay, it's easy peasy. If options were given, we can directly solve that. But unfortunately, in this question, options are not given. That's the main problem. If options are not given, you have to solve the question. If options are provided, using options, you will get the idea which option should be correct which option is not correct but if options are not given you have to solve it completely you have to solve it completely like this question we know that at this k value the both the poles will be real and equal so i i made the characteristic equation and i found the value of k for which the roots of this equation are equal it means i applied the discriminant method b square minus 4ac has to be zero so b square minus 4ac has to be 0 and I calculated the k value first. Let's calculate k. So the equation will become 4 plus k square plus 4k minus 8k minus 8 equal to 0. So it will become k square k square minus k square minus 4k minus 4 equal to 0. This is the quadratic equation you will get. So let's calculate the k value. So k is equal to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay. So you can see that uh, it will be 4 plus, we will take plus sign, not minus. 4 root 2, 4 plus 4 root 2 divided by 2. Okay. So you will get 2 plus 2 root 2. So you got the k value. You got the k value at this point. At this point, we found the k value. Once you get this k value, you can put this k here and calculate the s value. Calculate this location. So this way you can calculate the answer. I mean, I am telling you the different dimension. I am not telling you the direct conventional method. You can use the mathematics, I told you. You can use the mathematics, okay, to solve the problem. You remember what I told you in the first class. If you remember, I told you in the first class that we are going to solve the problems without conventional method. We will apply the mathematics. So now you can see that I am applying simple mathematics. I know that at the breakaway point, at the breakaway point, both pole location is same. It means for the characteristic equation, 
roots has to be equal. It means the discriminant, if it's a quadratic function, the discriminant has to be 0. So I calculate the discriminant, b square minus 4ac, and calculate the k value. Once you get this k value, once you get this k value, put it here, put it here in this equation and calculate the s value. You will get this location, break away or break in. Is it clear everyone? Have you understood it? Have you understood it? Say everyone, tell me. So you can apply these methods. It means if somehow you can apply mathematics on the problem, believe me, it will look simpler. And even if you don't know the concept of breakaway, you don't know this, you don't remember this formula, let's say dk by ds equal to zero. You don't remember this formula. You can apply simple mathematics. You can apply simple mathematics here. The geometrical way you can use, okay? Or the mathematics you can apply and calculate the k value. It's easy peasy, okay? I hope you got the idea. I hope you understood it, okay? So this was the last question, guys. This was the last question. Again, we have one more session on tomorrow at 9.30 p.m., okay? So don't forget to watch that session also because that session is again very important. And uh, it's time for the Guru Dakshina, guys. Now you have to give the Guru Dakshina. And the Guru Dakshina is you have to subscribe our channel. So don't forget to subscribe it. Press the like button if you have not liked it and uh, press the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever my sessions are live. There is one more thing that I want to tell you is uh, we have our mobile app. Go to the Google Play Store, install this mobile app and uh, enjoy free lectures there. Okay. I'm also taking some lectures on, on mobile app so you can join me at uh, mobile app also. Okay. So that's all for uh, sir, please make a hidden tricks for power electrons. Yes, we will make hidden tricks for power electrons also, for network also. But let's uh, go one by one. Na? So I told you how to solve these questions without conventional approach. Using mathematics, you can solve for root locus. Okay. So this was my third class. Next class is on tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Okay. So that's all for today's session, guys. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next class. Take care. Bye.